and peace be with you. Christ is risen. Okay, today is uh, the second Sunday of Easter. There are actually 50 days in the season of Easter, from the first Sunday of Easter all the way to Pentecost Sunday. So today we celebrate what's called Holy Humor Sunday because the joke was on all of those people that thought they had wiped out love, wiped out Jesus, all of those religious authorities in the Roman Empire thought that they had killed Jesus. They thought they had wiped out hope, that they had destroyed the hope of the world and the jokes on them. So today, the only thing that's going to stay the same is the beginning of worship, the prelude, so Mary would know when to start the prelude, <laughs> and announcements, and then the postlude. And so when there's uh, only one thing left, it will be the postlude, because everything else during worship today is going to be picked out of this basket. I'm just going to randomly like this, pick something out and say what we're going to do next. So, and then randomly, you get to pick out something out of this plate, which is kind of like a joke. I mean, not that you're, the joke isn't you picking out the thing, but the thing in the end of the plate is a joke. I see a few people who like to make announcements, so go right ahead. Good morning. I am going to be sending clipboards around. Don't be intimidated by so many. I'm going to just send them so they're on both sides and the ushers won't have to swap over. Um, this is for the basket auction and salad luncheon. The mission committee is asking for donations for both. So there is a clipboard for basket donations and then there is also a clipboard for salad and dessert um, donations. And the basket auction is Sunday, May 7th, following worship. Thank you. I'm Mary Ann Gregory working on Relay for Life. Relay for Life is a signature fundraising event for the American Cancer Society. The event will be June 3rd. I want to remind you of some things that you can do to help. Uh, just last week, I heard of someone else in our community who has cancer. So we've got to do what we can to help. Um, you can buy a bag like this and put the name of the person you wish to honor. It could be someone who lost to cancer or won over cancer or a caretaker. And um, Jenny Kugel did this one for Kevin's brother. She copied a a picture and put it right on here. And then the other thing is bring a canned good. We'll have a tote at the back of the room. So on that night, we're going to put a canned good in here. We've tried gravel and other things. We think some a piece of food, a canned good would work, and then those will all go to the Northeast Tama County Food Pantry. Secondly, you can join the team and then you can help us at the event or before. It's $10 to join the team, $15 additional to um, get a t-shirt. And uh, we would like more um, donations for the silent auction at that event. We already have some nice pieces. You can give those to either Claude or to me. Thank you, Mary Ann. And as Ben is getting ready to make an announcement, I'd like to wish happy birthday to Jay. Ashenbrenner's birthday is this week on the 26th. And when you see John Messer, his birthday is tomorrow. Pam Brantz is on the 28th, which is Saturday. I mean, not Saturday, that would have been Friday. Friday is, and Mary Jo Cavalier's birthday is next Sunday. And I think Ed, is Ed related to you? Mm-hmm. His birthday is the 27th, if you, you know, I think you probably remembered that. Mm -hmm. So, happy birthday. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. Seems like whenever I make ugly threats that we're not going to have church, you guys, <laughs> you guys respond really, really well. 
And I, I'd just like to, you know, get the clipboard filled out without making ugly threats of no church. So I'm going to pass the clipboard today, and hopefully you guys will respond and, and sign up. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. The very first thing we're going to do this morning. <laughs> it's number 17, the benediction. <laughs> so go, please stand. I'll give them time. Go to live in the world as Christ's disciples. Know that God accepts all questions and wonderings. And God is forever patient with us as we take the time we need to come to an understanding of God's presence in our lives. And all say, Amen. You may be seated. You know, it sounded like um, when, we're, when I was teaching... I always like to say, what is the purpose of our, of our class today? What are we trying to do? And so with the benediction, you know what the purpose is, that we're to seek God and to go out and to take the time we need, and we need all the time we can get to understand God and serve God. All right, I really am not looking at what they are. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us, number 13. And the numbers that I'm reading, I'm saying, is to help Jenny know on the sli which slide to go to. So please join with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I am going to pick out something out of this plate. <laughs> uh. A pastor was speaking to a group of second graders about the resurrection of Jesus when one student asked, what did Jesus say right after he came out of the grave? Well, the pastor explained that the Gospels don't, don't tell us what he said when he came out of the grave. And the hand of one little girl shot up and said, I know what he said. He said, ta-da! All right, let's see, oops, stuck together. Number six and number seven, as we come together, we confess the times of uh, our brokenness um, and our, we have a prayer of confession. There are times when we judge others out of fear of being judged ourselves. We call them names and we put them down. We may discredit their faith and write them off. When other people have a faith that differs from ours, we say it's not enough. Sometimes we believe that doubts are an impediment to faith. Gracious God, in a world where there is such a vast rainbow of ways to have relationship with you, help us not to limit our vision and our understanding. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. And let us now be in a time of silence as we ponder that prayer of confession. Number seven, Jesus said to Thomas, even better blessings are in store for those who do not see and yet believe. Amen. 
We have never seen Jesus, and yet we know that in mysterious and wonderful ways, the risen Christ is with us even now, offering us forgiveness and new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. The anticipation is great. Number 15, which happens to be the doxology. <laughs> Let us stand and give praise to God who forgives us and calls us into ministry. be seated. It feels like you're getting up and down a little bit more than usual, doesn't it? Because usually you, you stay standing for a while. Like when we have a call to worship, we have a hymn, and so you just stay standing for that. But with it broken up, it just kind of changes things a little bit. It's time for another one out of here. Where do pencils go for vacation? Where do pencils go for vacation? Can you guess that? Where do pencils, you know, the writing instrument, go for vacation? Yay, you got it. <laughs> I think you've heard that one before. That's definitely like a little kid joke there. All right, let's see. The gospel reading for today, which is um, slide number eight, comes from, and we're going to go right from slide number eight to slide number nine. The gospel reading comes from the gospel according to John, verse 20, I mean, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on the first, that first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands. This is a sign for Jesus. <laughs> his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put them in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, 
my Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. These are the words of love for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I really want to sing a hymn. I hope I pick out a hymn. I want to sing, but... But instead, you know why we're gathered here? We're gathered here through a sign. We're in number three. And that sign is the water of our baptism. It is a sign that we are God's reconciled and forgiven people. So we come together as God's reconciled and forgiven people. Amen. Please stand and join me with Easter People Raise Your Voices. It's slide number four. It's found in the red hymnal number 304. Easter People Raise Your Voices. <laughs> may be seated. At least I think you're going to be able to be seated. And not until I pick up the next. I hope you're checking off in the bulletin. You know what? Well, maybe you haven't. Check off the, see what we've done already. So you know how, what's coming up. One of the announcements I forgot to make is uh, Debbie Miller is handing out your quarterly statements today. So if you haven't already gotten one, um, Debbie will be in the back of the, the church um, after worship. Um, so you can get your quarterly statements. And wouldn't that be nice if the next thing I, I picked out of here was had something to do with the, off, the offering? But I have a feeling it's not. No, but what it does have something to do with our offering, it's our prayer of dedication of our gifts and ourselves, which is slide number 16. So we're going to bless the gifts before we receive them. So we're going to offer, we offer you these gifts, oh God. You can. We are here ready to go and proclaim your message of love, forgiveness, and hope to all the world. Use us with all of our doubts and questions 
to proclaim this simple truth to the world. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. You know what the opposite of faith is? It's not doubt. The opposite of faith is certainty. When we think that we have all the questions answered, that we know for sure about everything, that's the opposite of faith. Faith does have questions. Faith does have doubt. All right. Oh. Well, we're on number 11. Oh, we didn't see the video. Oh, I, I went right on. Let's watch the video before the message, which was slide number... Yeah, okay. Let's see this.
And now we're on slide number 11, the message, no fooling, it's really true. <laughs> no fooling, it's really true we're at the message. And it was that next day, after the women had gone to the tomb, and Mary Magdalene had come back, where was everybody else? They were locked up in the room because they were afraid. And they had every reason to be afraid. They were afraid that those same religious authorities, those same Roman folks, would have the same problem with them as they had with Jesus. After all, they were followers of Jesus. They, they, they were his friends. And so they were afraid. And they were in that room. And, you know, Thomas has gotten, you know, a bad rap. He's gotten this nickname called Doubting Thomas. It really, really doesn't say that he so much doubted as that he questioned. And wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't you question? <laughs> wouldn't you, if, if you had watched somebody die a horrible, horrible, painful death, and then somebody tells you that the tomb is empty and that you talk to him, wouldn't you question? Wouldn't you have those same questions? But instead, Jesus comes back. To that locked room. Notice the timing here in John's gospel. The gospel of life and light. It's a week later it says. A week later it says. Um, it says that it was a week later. And he comes and he says. Again in a locked room. But what is the first words that, that Jesus says to the disciples. That are hiding in a locked up in a room, scared. What does he say to them? He says to them, not once, not twice, but three times, peace be with you. Now, I don't know about you, but I know about me. If I had watched my beloved, thy person, be falsely charged, accused of all kinds of things, and then brutally murdered, I would not be feeling very peaceful. In fact, I think my, my human reaction would be, what can I do to get back at these horrible people? What can I do? What can I do to make things right? What will I do to seek justice? But instead... Jesus comes back with these words, peace be with you. And then he follows it up with, you have the power. You have the power to forgive. Wow, I don't know. I don't feel like I have much power right now. I feel like I'm a little frightened. I'm a leaderless. I don't have the person that I thought I was going to follow that was going to bring us. Remember. This is the one that's supposed to redeem us. This is the one that's supposed to change things. And I don't see things changing very much at all. In fact, I think I see things being worse than ever. I see, I see someone that was not guilty of anything being charged with a horrible crime. And I want to get back at somebody. I want to hold on. I want to I want to fester this. I mean, I don't want to fester this, but I want it to stay. I don't want to let go of it yet. I don't want to let go. I want to stay in this room and I want to be mad. Right. I want to be mad. I've been hurt. When they hurt him, they hurt me. And all those other things can't be true now. This can't be true. All he said cannot be true. But then he shows up. He shows up.